restore us too to new life filled with abundant blessings and gratitude. Amen. your former great love, which in your faithfulness you swore to David. Remember, O Lord, how your servant is sought how I bear in my bosom the assaults of the people. The taunts with which your enemies, Lord, have mocked, with which they have mocked every step of your anointed one. Blessed be the Lord forever. today comes from St. John, the third chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> well, today my theme is going to be talking about love. And our gospel today lesson is about one of the probably most favorite and beloved Bible verses that we have probably all learned. Yes, God's amazing love, the good news of salvation, and the meaning of Christmas is all rolled up into this one verse. Now, how many that are here today have memorized John 360, maybe in Sunday school or confirmation? Probably most everyone here. John 3.16 is a verse that has been translated into more languages than any other piece of literature. It's a verse that millions of children memorize before anything else. And it's even a verse that we often see at sometimes major sporting events that's held up on signs or worn on t-shirts. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We can't change the fact that God loves us. That he loves each and every one of us. And in fact, God loves the whole world more than we can ever even imagine. So no wonder that this is one of the world's most favorite verses, because it is indeed good news. Actually, it's the best news we've ever heard. So today we're going to look at the meaning of Christmas, probably in just a few words. Well, maybe not. 
And the best way we know to do this is through these words of John 3.16. No one can outdo what God has done. No one can give a greater gift than God has already given to us. I'd like to share some thoughts from the author Max Lucado, who wrote uh, Pondering a Young Girl Named Mary at this Christmas season. You know, as much as she tried to keep a good attitude, it wasn't easy. She was far from home, miles from family in her own bed. She had spent the last few days on crowded roads and during the winter chill. Money was scarce. Friends were nowhere near. A warm bed and a hot meal, the prospects were slim. Her heart ached for her family. She felt separated from them. You know, under normal circumstances, they would have been thrilled to learn of her pregnancy. But pregnant before the wedding? With her conservative family and her bizarre explanation? And to have to tell the man she was to marry that she was carrying a child who wasn't his. It was a miracle he still married her. And another miracle was about what she needed right now. She'd envisioned giving birth at home, mom holding one hand and an aunt the other, a midwife, the doting relatives, Joseph and a crowd of neighbors outside the door. Perhaps if they could all have experienced the birth of her firstborn together, they would believe her story. At least that's how I imagine Mary felt. Of course, I could be wrong. Perhaps the feed trough and stable were her idea, but I don't think so. So when Joseph returned from the inn and asked if she was allergic to sheep, it's safe to say she was a little chadjourned. She wasn't, it, this wasn't how she planned to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Joseph led the donkey down a steep path that ended at the mouth of a cave. He lowered Mary off the back of the donkey. He looked at her face, fatigued and powdery from the road. She touched his cheek and smiled and entered the grotto. Joseph built a fire and heated water. Mary cleared a spot on the straw and set about the task of bringing God into the world. With cows as her witnesses and Joseph as her midwife, she did just that. Within moments, the hand of the star hanger clutched Mary's finger. The feet of the skywalker laid in Joseph's palm. No wonder the angels filled the sky with worship. Any doubt of the Father's love disappeared that night. God was wrapped in barnyard towels so that the hay wouldn't scratch his back. In that moment, the ache in Mary's back and the ache in her heart, they faded away. The questions of how, the wonderings of when, they didn't linger. In spite of the chaos, Christ came. Because you see, chaos cannot keep Christ out of his world. And chaos cannot keep him from your world either. The moment Mary touched God's face is the moment God made his case. There is no place he will not go. No chaos he cannot calm. Yes, the God who created that vast cosmos, will not, will, he's going to hold on to you amid all of the chaos. Love you even when you feel most unlovable and bring you to eternal life. All because our Heavenly Father's perfect love for us. Yes, perfect love. Think about the fact that God's love is a giving love, a generous love. It's a grace-filled love. 
a truth only gift of love, free and unconstrained. The love of God that John is talking about here is given without reference to our merit, our goodness, or any of our deserving. God doesn't make a list and check it twice to find out who's been naughty or nice before he's going to give you his Christmas gift. Advent is the perfect time to explore what the real meaning of Christmas is. What message should it convey to every one of us here today? Christmas is a time of remembering. Remembering that great love that God has for each and every one of us. He loves us so much that he did not spare his only son so that we might be saved. Remembering the uniqueness of his life, his teachings, his miracles, his prophecies, his death, and his resurrection. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what this is, why this is doing all this. Let's switch over to the other mic. Sometimes that one just does not like me. All right. Next, Christmas is a time of loving. People make a special effort to be just a little bit kinder, a little more considerate of others, and a little more generous during this Christmas season. Think about some of the ads you may have seen right now on television, those human kindness ones. I think of the the guy who rescued the little foal that was separated from his mother and lifted it up over the gate to his mother. The little elementary football team where they let the little guy go to win, you know, do a touchdown and pretend that they were trying to tackle him. Or right now it's been the little preschool hockey team where the opposing team, the little guy falls down and the other one comes over and makes sure he helps him up. Often in our desire to show more love, we get involved in such things we find like this season. We do caroling, we do toys for needy, we do meals sometimes for the less fortunate, we do the angel trees, the food banks, and a lot of other things during this month of December. We find it's a time for reaching out to others with genuine love and concern. But shouldn't these expressions of our love be a part of our everyday lives? God so loved the world. Let us never forget that. Let our motivation be love, for as God so loved us, so should we love, just as he loves and shows us through this gift of salvation. Now Christmas is also a time of giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Look, love cannot look with indifference on the hungry or the sick, the lonely, the lost souls of our world. Love must give. Let us never forget that God gave all. He gave his only begotten son. This gift was freely given, lovingly given graciously given to all of us who were undeserving sinners. Yes, Christ shared our human nature that we might receive his divine nature. Day by day, those who receive him are being transformed into his image until we all come into the full stature of the perfected children of God, washed in that blood of the Lamb. We are called to live out this love that he so freely gives to us. It's also a time of forgiving. God was willing to forgive us. He was willing to show mercy to a sinful, lost, and dying world. 
Do we possess his forgiving spirit? Or is our spirit a judgmental one that looks down upon others? Is there someone we need to forgive today? Do we need to forgive ourselves? Christmas is also a time of rescuing. God rescued us by his love, mercy, and his grace. He saved us from perishing from our sins, and without Christ we are without life and headed for an eternity without God. We would be forever separated from our Heavenly Father who made us and longs to save us. He wants us to inherit eternal life. We are called his children, and he wants us to believe and to be saved. We must not only live this good news, but be the good news, to be a messenger, and to be an example. He is the light of the world, and we are called into that light. Let us shine our light to raise others to him. How can we share our light today to help someone else that is in need? Christmas is also a time of changing. The Christ of Christmas changes us. He makes us new creations. All things become new for us. We have new goals, new ideas, new direction, a new hope, and renewed loving kindness. Christ changes people for the better with his love. Christmas is also a time of rejoicing. Rejoicing in God's unmerited grace. Rejoicing in the release of forgiveness. Rejoicing in a new life with a new mission. Christmas is all about how the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God's Son was born into the human family as one of us. And this wasn't something that God sent Jesus to do out of love for just a portion of humanity, but for all of humanity. And Christmas is the good news. John 3.16 can be so difficult for us to fully understand, and yet at the same time so desperately hopeful and life-giving. John 3.16 promises that God will never let us go. That God will not take no for an answer. That God will not, he's going to pursue us like the intrepid hound of heaven until we are God's own. And because of this, does that mean we have nothing to do? Nothing to contribute to this most important relationship? Well, definitely not. Because once we have been loved this fully, this completely, we can respond in love, honoring God, and sharing that good news of God's love to the world with all of that we meet. And we can love each other throwing ourselves into struggles and celebrations all around us, always working for the good of our neighbors and the world, propelled forward by the knowledge that God loves us and this world so, so very much. And so there's plenty for us to do, but we do it all knowing that we are his messengers we're his witnesses for what God has done for us. And we are not the managers. Yes, God is saying, here are love's dimensions. Make them ours this Christmas and beyond. What a precious gift God has given for you. 
his only son. What a costly gift it was to give. He gave him up to the cross and he gave him for the world, for those of us who were the rebels. That is love. Can you feel it? This is a Bethlehem love and a Calvary love all in one. It is a love that Jesus Christ still bears for you today, right now, right here. This love gift of God is ours. We need only take it by faith in Jesus Christ. Believe in Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's the message of the scripture today. This is the good news for Christmas. The greatest gift ever given offered free, unconditionally, to all who believe. We all need a Savior. What a gift, this love of God in and through Jesus. May it be ours this Christmas and always to shine and live out fully every day. Don't ever forget that. God loves us so much and so unconditionally, and God wants us to be with him forever. Also, as Max Lucado had said, God loves us so much that he allowed his son to even go through hell for us so that he won't have to go to heaven without us. Has there ever been or ever will there be a greater love than this? In closing today, I'd like to read a quote from Fred Rogers, the, host of, the late host of the children's program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He says, Imagine if we all walked into the world with the belief that each person was inherently worthy. Imagine if our goal was to help each other recognize that we are all worthy of being loved. Imagine if we sought to listen more than we spoke. Let us pray. God of all loving compassion, love us, keep us, hold on to us in all things, even and especially when we are tempted to flee your love and light. And then release us again that we might in turn love one another especially now during this Advent and Christmas season. Our desire is to spend time at home this season with loved ones, and it's God's desire to bring his family home to him also. Amen.
confess our faith with all other believers in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Israel had lost hope that it was as though they had died. Show us the places where we have become resigned and have given up on our dreams, on others, on ourselves. Nothing is truly lost with you, O Lord. May bones reanimated be our reminder and our motivation to start again. Life-giving God, hear our prayer. In war zones, droughts, and famines, disaster areas, and places of mass persecution, breathe your spirit of life where hope has dried up. Use your people to minister to one another's needs and to restore a sense of what is possible. Life-giving God, hear our prayer. Bless the work of healers, caregivers, and all those who work tirelessly to find new treatments and cures for chronic diseases. Inspire them to discover what they never imagined could be done and to use their talents for the benefit of many. Life-giving God, hear our prayer. Those who believe in you, even though they die, will live. This is a lofty promise, but one which you deliver to all who put their faith in you. Impart your healing to us all this day. We especially bring before you Paxton, Rick, Jeannie, Lane, Kyle, Arlene, Shirley, Gretchen, Ivor, Grayson, Dolores, Vernon, Phyllis, Mike, Dave, Father Dale, Linda, Andrew. Life-giving God, hear our prayer. They who once were dead are now alive in you. We have no fear of death because we belong to you. Join us with the saints in never-ending praise to our loving and redeeming creator. Life-giving God, hear our prayer. Renew our strength and rekindle our zeal for your word and your work in this world. And make of us the living answers to prayer for the sake of all whom you love. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Take a moment to share peace. And at this time we'll have our noisy offering. <laughs>
rise. you can create vibrant abundance. Take our humble offerings and make of them an overflowing blessing from which the thirsty may drink and the dead may find new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is, is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our table is now ready. We will be doing communion today um, continuous, so the ushers will um, guide you up. So the table is now ready. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Right, our morning announcements. I want to make sure that you put on your calendars that the uh, Sunday School program and pageant will be held Sunday, December 19th at 9.30. Um, Reminder that there is a silent auction that the quilters are holding right now for a quilt, and that drawing will be 
taking place on December 12th. Um, the Christmas with the Chosen, the Messengers, is a movie that's going to be held here on December 22nd at 6 p.m., no charge. Everyone come, everyone must know he is here. Um, reminder that Christmas Eve service will be held on December 24th, 4 p.m. And we're hoping, weather permitting, that this afternoon that the um, Community um, Arts Council program um, Christmas concert will be held today at 4 p.m. So we're still keeping our fingers crossed um, that weather will cooperate. Uh, are there any other announcements or prayer requests that should be made known? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jill. Um, any birthdays today? Any anniversaries? All right. Then we will close with our closing uh, hymn number 264. <laughs>